All right, here's how to do your uh, weighing by redox gas stoichiometry lab. We're going to start with these, this equipment here. First of all, safety. Got my goggles on, got my apron on, because we're going to be working with some stuff that's a bit more dangerous than what you're used to working with. So pay attention, the stuff that we're dealing with here. Two molar hydrochloric acid. Looks just like water. You've got hydrochloric acid in your stomach. It's 0.1 molar. This is, you haven't learned about those numbers and those quantities yet, but that is 20 times more concentrated than what is in your stomach. This is not stuff that you want to play around with here. So you need to keep your, keep your wits about you with this stuff. If you happen to get a little bit on your hands, it's not a big emergency. If you get a little bit on your hands, a drop or two, just, just rinse it off right in the sink there. Um, <clears throat> always the first thing you do if you aren't sure if you got some on your hands, if it starts to itch, wash them off. Uh, acids will start to make your fingers itch before it starts to burn. So you want to wash it before it starts to itch, or before it starts to burn, after it starts to itch if you're not sure. Okay, so there's your hydrochloric acid. If you spill more than that, still wash your hands off, but you need to let me know if there's some on your lab table or something. We have good ways of cleaning that up and I'll let you know what that is at the time. All right, so goggles, aprons definitely, because you don't want this stuff on your body. Just work carefully with it. It's not worth panicking over, uh, but if you do get a little on yourself, you need to wash it off quickly uh, before it starts to hurt you. All right. So the other weird piece of equipment you'll be using is this thing called a udiometer. Uh, it's got little numbers on it that you can't read very well from where you are, uh, but it starts with zero at the very top and goes down to 50 down close to the bottom. These are milliliters, uh, not millimeters, but milliliters of volume measurement. That'll tell you how much stuff is in here. All right, so, and you can also estimate on this to get two decimal places on your volume measurements with this stuff. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more when I show you the measurements. The first thing that you need to do when you get to your lab station is you'll have a piece of magnesium. You need to take that magnesium and tangle it up in the copper wire that's stuck through this little black rubber stopper. Looks kind of weird. We're, this magnesium, we're going to be reacting with the hydrochloric acid. So tangle it up in there. You can curl it and bend it pretty well. If you bend it too much, it will break. It is a fairly brittle metal, uh, so don't overdo it. But get it tangled up in there. Okay. Set that stopper down, and you need to take your udiometer out of this clamp. Here's how you do that. Hold the udiometer with one hand with the other hand push the middle of the three tongues that are holding this thing together. You see this hand is between the udiometer and the ring stand. It's stuck in between here. I'm not out here trying to do stuff because then the udiometer hits this hand as I'm trying to pull it out. So between the udiometer and the stand push on that tongue and it just slips right out. Nice and easy, no flailing around, nothing gets broken. All right. Take that udiometer, turn it so the closed end is down, set that closed end down in the sink. So if you spill anything, it'll run down into the sink. No problem. 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, I'll bring that around to you so you won't need to measure that out. Just pour in what I give you right down into the udiometer. Okay, so you've got your acid down in there the next thing you need to do is fill, fill this thing up with water. I'm not getting water from the sink. You need room temperature water for this because temperatures affect gases quite a lot. Again, end of the udiometer down in the sink and tilt that thing. Pour gently down the side of your udiometer. Pour it down slowly. You can get a little bit more as it fills up, tip it upright, fill this thing all the way to the tippy top. The rest of that water can go back in there. 
this is completely full. Now keep in mind, acid, this acid is more dense than water, so it's going to be down at the bottom. Maybe a little mixing in here, but up at the top we've just got room temperature tap water. So when you take your stopper and set it down in there, you can see some water is spilling out. Don't freak out. That's water, assuming you poured it down in there gently. That's why you've got to pour it gently there. Okay, you can wipe up that water in a minute. Finger over there because there's a hole in this stopper. Turn the udiometer over. Get that stopper down under the water with your finger still over it. Then you can take your finger off after it's in the water. You're going to see some shimmery stuff here. Like I said, hydrochloric acid is more dense than water, so it's going to start to sink. That's why you get your finger out of the way. Clamp the udiometer back into the stand. What will happen? The hydrochloric acid will sink. It's going to run into your magnesium ribbon and it'll react. It'll produce hydrogen gas. You get lots of bubbles. You'll collect that gas up here and measure it. After this is done, I'm going to come back and show you how to do those measurements. Alright, so there it goes.